What if I could tell you everything? The entire history of the world. Now what if I could tell you that I could do it in just one hour? I am going to tell the whole story from the Big Bang to the present day. How the planet prepare for the rise of men from the Stone Age that led to the Steam Engine. The first seeds growing into cities and then civilizations. Everything is connected and the path leads to you. It took the world 13.7 billion years to unfold. But you will find everything you need to know in the next one hour. This is our infant universe. Everything that will ever exist. Everything that will ever happen all begins here. Within this little bundle of energy, smaller than an atom. And right now, history, as we know it, is about to mysteriously begin. For reasons that we may never know, our universe suddenly erupts in a million of 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 a second. He went from a size smaller than an atom to bigger than a galaxy. Whoosh! And is the key to understand everything that is getting ready to unfold in the next one hour. Within a fraction of a second, the Big Bang creates all the energy that will ever exist. The energy that will power the stars. The energy that will fuel everything that will ever live. All the energy that you will ever consume dates back from the beginning of time. When you put gasoline into your car, you are tapping energy that was created at the beginning of time during the Big Bang. You are tapping the energy of the universe itself. We are only a few minutes into our one hour journey, yet 380,000 years have passed. You are about to witness the birth of your first original ancestors, the first atoms. This is hydrogen and the universe will use it to make everything in a world around us hydrogen is kind of like picking up a movie star to make a princess film which star am i gonna pick to make a movie with this princess well i'm gonna pick hydrogen from that if you add a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, then you can create lots of different atoms. The first atoms blast through the early universe. And lucky for us, they don't spread out evenly. Because in those little pockets, with more atoms, gravity the great shaper of the universe begins to work his magic. The first galaxies begin to form, only to reveal the timeless secret of the universe. 
Throughout history, whenever matter and energy can be drawn together in one place, more complex things can emerge. We have all these urban centers around the world where so much creativity, so much art, so much science, so much culture came about only because of the opportunity of interaction. Well, in a sense, where there is stuff, more stuff can develop. Where there isn't much stuff, not much stuff can develop. 300 million years after the Big Bang, inside of forming galaxies, Gravity continues to squeeze together clouds of gas and dust, causing pressure and heat to violently rise. When the temperature reaches 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, hydrogen atoms slam together, creating a new element, helium and radiating still bursts of energy. The first stars are born. Suddenly, there were these beacons of light, shining. These stars, they were just pouring energy throughout the universe. Let there be light! Mm, but something is missing from this early universe. There are billions of stars, yet not a single planet. To form planets and eventually people. To take the next leap that will make all of the history possible. The universe needs more to work with than just hydrogen and helium. The heavier elements, the more complicated elements that we make stuff out of, like iron and carbon that life is made out of, they are actually manufactured in stars. We may see things like the sun, like our sun, a source of light. But there is something bigger happening deep inside. Stars are element factories. They fuse hydrogen into helium. And then helium into lithium, forming the 25 elements we need to live including common elements like oxygen, nitrogen, iron, and carbon. So, more than 12 billion years ago, the stars are already creating the element that will spur the Iron Age, allow for the building of cities, and the creation of mankind most famous monuments. Taking a look at the Statue of Liberty reveals the next challenge for the early universe. While her frame is made of iron, the lady's skin requires a much heavier element to be made in stars. For Lady Liberty to have material for her skin. In order for Lady Liberty to have gold for her wedding rings. Or to have uranium for our nuclear reactors. Some elements had to be created another way. Stars do not have enough energy to do the job. But if the element factory isn't powerful enough, then what about blowing up the factory? Just few million years after the first stars formed, 
Some of them exploded. Wham! These explosions, known as supernovas, are the biggest blasts in the universe since the Big Bang. The supernova explosions provide the extra boost of energy to fuse heavier elements in a fiery blast of their own destruction. Stars create uranium, gold, and all the rest of the elements that will fill our world, including copper. So for our Lady Liberty to put the skin on, the periodic table of elements is really like a library of matter in the universe. Think of it as building blocks. Your chicken comes from that particular building set. Supernovas are absolutely necessary for us to be here. We have iron in our blood, is literally we have little bits of supernovas floating through us. We are stardust. There is no Bronze Age without the supernovas. Try to go to any multivitamin store and buy some vitamins. And just look closer at the ingredients. You'll find copper, you'll find zinc, you'll find selenium. You'll find all sorts of elements that can be only made in a supernova. The elements made by stars will become the seeds of life on Earth. And the drivers of human history. But the journey has just begun and before there can be life, our universe needs to build us a new home. But to build a proper house, you need to assemble the right materials and have them available all in one place. The materials you have at hand is gonna dictate what kind of house your planet is gonna be. To get enough of the right material at the right place, it takes an awful long time. Over the next 8 billion years, half of the history as we know it the element factories continued their work. Stars explode and then they are reborn again and again. Four and a half billion years ago, an object the size of Mars smashes in our planet. The Earth swallows much of the impact and the debris going around it get together and form the moon. The formation of the moon was a very important event in Earth's history. The formation of the moon is a very important element for the climate of the Earth today. The creation of the moon happened 4 billion years ago. The moon keeps the Earth steady. Its gravitational pull prevents the Earth from wobbling and saving us from wild climate swings. The collision that formed the Moon keeps Earth tilted on its axis, giving the planet a key ingredient to life. Having seasons like spring, autumn, summer, it's very important for planet Earth. The moon 
is also responsible for slowing down Earth's rotation and making the day longer from 6 hours up to 24 hours in just one day. It used to be 6 hours. Four point four billion years ago. It is too hot on Earth for liquid water to exist. But there is water vapor, steam in the atmosphere. Now where is steam is gonna be rain. So it comes a period of millions of years where the planet cooled down and rain was keep falling and falling and cooling down the planet and making more water. So 3.8 billion years ago, our planet had a moon and permanent oceans. I am telling the history of the world in one hour from the Big Bang to the present day. 3.8 billion years ago, beneath our primeval oceans, a revolution is about to begin. Life, the elements are combining together into something called DNA. Six simple elements including hydrogen from the Big Bang, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen created by stars have combined to make up the substances that are our life. Life is made of DNA, we are made of DNA. Within its spirals hide the secrets codes of life. Just 700,000 years after the planet have formed, life on Earth begins. It is not Adam and Eve who gave us birth, but some tiny little bastards called bacteria. We are very egocentric, we think we animals run the world when in fact we are a very late entrance. Earth was an empire of bacteria way before animals. Animals and humans are made of bacteria. In fact, I have an entire zoo of bacteria in me right now. Each of us have more bacteria in our body than there are people on the planet. Two and a half billion years ago, some bacteria, this bacteria, has figured out how to use the sun's energy to live. In doing this, they also create one of the most important waste products in the history of the world. Oxygen. Soon, oxygen will remake our world. But first, it has a more important thing to do. You see, Earth oceans are filled at this time with iron particles. And everybody knows what happens when oxygen meets iron. Rust. This rusted iron collects on a sea floor. And billions of years later, these deposits will be raised up to become major sources of the world's iron and steel. These iron deposits later on drove the Industrial Revolution. Once there is no more iron left in the sea to rust. No more to rust. 
So these little bacteria have a new mission to complete. They will create so much oxygen that it will get released into the atmosphere. Oxygen in the water, oxygen in the air. So from then on, we have a very different planet from all the other planets in the solar system. Now, life on Earth takes a giant leap. Some bacteria learn how to live on oxygen. For the first time, some bacteria learn how to live on oxygen. <gasps> Every breath is a prayer to the bacteria. Every human breath is a ritual. Two and a half billion years old. Life likes to stick with what it works, even in the course of billions of years. And oxygen is a game changer. By taming its power, life has found a better way to energize itself. Over the next two billion years, life becomes more complex and the skies become blue. The same with the oceans that reflect it. Blue. And heavy hard continents start to appear. So Earth begins to look more like the place we now call home. We are now 550 million years ago and take a deep breath because life is about to go wild. When you have abundant oxygen, you have the biology's version of the Big Bang. It gets size and complexity. Yes, oxygen lets you do that. This is when actually most of the animal groups evolve. This is about 500 million years ago when we have the first bony fish evolving in the sea. These fish our direct ancestors, even though they don't look exactly like us. These fishy ancestors, they will evolve body parts that will make our own body parts possible. Including a spine with a jaw and mouth and teeth. In fact, all the vertebrates today represent modifications of the original body plant fish. Fish body plant. In the first four billion years, the plants and animals were stuck in the sea. But this is about to change. Taking advantage of the newly formed Earth atmosphere, plants make the move first and move on land. Around 400 million years ago, animals are getting ready to take the leap and step on land. Well, the first ashore are the amphibians. The descendants of this amphibian will include us. For me personally, it's amazing that moment where that amphibian takes a leap on the land and walks to shore and takes that big gulp of air. The first Brat. <gasps> it's kind of like grand, 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 grandpa who comes out of the ocean and <sighs> experience this fantastic land. 
Hey, I can live here. Look at those food. Look at those trees. Look at those bugs. Mmm, <laughs> this is such a beautiful world for me, the amphibian. Mmm, yummy world. Eventually, humans will conquer every imaginable terrain. But before they can do that, our ancestors have to cut their final tie with the water. Our amphibian ancestors, like the modern frog, have jelly eggs that will dry out on a land. But our amphibian would solve this problem and eventually will develop a new form of egg with hard shell that keeps the moisture inside. This allows us to carry the oceans with us on the land. This new type of eggs signals the evolution from amphibians into reptiles. You can be three, four, five thousand miles away from the water and still have that water with you in that egg to give birth. That is the key. It cuts that final tie to the ocean. Now we are basically free to colonize the rest of the land. 300 million years ago, life flourishes in swamps, where planet Earth is cooking up a surprise. The plants here in these swamps, as soon as they die, they're buried, compacted and cooked. The energy created by the Big Bang and radiated to plants on Earth is being stored as a skull. It is an energy to be opened by human beings later on. 250 million years ago, an apocalypse unfolds. The biggest spike in volcanic activity happens since the beginnings of the planet. And now 70% of the animals die. This is the worst mass dies off in history. The Permian extinction. Extinction, it's a recurring story in the evolution of planet Earth. Five times in the last 500 million years. Five times some cataclysm just wiped out the dominant species for five times in our earth history the dominant species was obliterated by some sort of disaster it's really just shuffling the life's deck to allow new creatures to take new creatures like the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs will reign for the next 100 million years. 65 million years ago, a six mile large asteroid slams into Earth, killing all the dinosaurs. The dust from the explosion blocks the sun and well, not all the creatures die, but every single creature weighing over 50 pounds. The age of the dinosaurs is over. The best gift that dinosaurs gave us was dying. When the dinosaurs went extinct, he gave the mammals the opportunity to rise, like this guy here. It doesn't take long from the disappearance of the dinosaurs for the first primates to appear. Hey monkey little monkey, you want me to scratch your back? Monkeys have 
five fingers, just like us. So we can grasp things, we can do things, we can grab, we can build, we can create. So 500 million years ago, the monkeys are evolving in the jungles, but the jungles are so hot. But in Africa, our ancestors, monkeys, they need to adapt as there are not so many trees. Monkey jumping from a tree to tree doesn't work very well anymore without being eaten by a tiger. There are more and more apes in a tree and less and less food. So the monkey had to move from tree to tree to the tall grass without being eaten by this tiger. So one way to do it is to learn how to walk. Like a monkey, walk like a human, walk like a monkey, walk like And then is learning computers. The monkey learning at a computer. <gasps> well, no computers yet. They are still proto-humans. Apes. Primates. Now is the time when the monkeys get the two rocks together and to make a fire. Hominids starting doing this 2.6 million years ago, breaking crypto crystalline silicates to make sharp edges out of the rock and use them as a tool. Now, with a simple modified rock silicon, we can do a wide variety of things, million of things that we could not do previously. So hey little monkey, I have an idea for you. You take this rock, you bang it into this other rock, and hey, now you have a hammer. Remember that all the energy was created in the Big Bang. About 800,000 years ago, the primitive humans have fire under their control. Using fire to cook is like having an external stomach to process food. The fire used by the monkey breaks down this food, releasing more calories for us to become human. More calories, so more energy for bigger brains than a monkey. This little monkey will use the fire as a gateway technology. The monkey will turn clay into pottery, metal into weapons. This monkey will use fire and take control of the steam power. If you don't have fire, then you don't have the internal combustion engine. The modern human have fully taken shape. The larynx, or the voice box, which is high up in the throat in our ancestors, evolves and more complex sounds are just now possible. We begin to speak for the first time information can be shared between individuals across generations. Humans have gained a critical advantage over every single other creature on Earth. Language changing us from being standalone computers to being a network. One doesn't have to depend on one's personal experience. One can buy the personal experience of anyone within one can communicate. That is a powerful advantage. No other creature has that. As a species, humans become exponentially smarter. The global game board has been set, and now we are ready to play. 
100 years ago, men can move. We have agile hands and primitive tools. Now we can communicate and we can control fire. For the first time, we are ready to expand from our African home. From Africa, on a path millions of years in the making. Shifting continents have linked Africa and Eurasia into the largest contiguous landmass on Earth. Afro Eurasia. For early humans, this means that more than half of land on Earth can be reached on foot. 33 million square miles, more than twice the size of the area of our entire moon. On foot, human dispersal was essential. We are one of the few primates to live on more than one continent simultaneously. Dispersal of human race is existence insurance. And human history as we know it can truly begin. As just the world begins to open up itself to man, on us. But, as a human race, we must survive. Get a hold of yourself. Just imagine it's a little fire. You get... It's not so chilly outside. Come on, get a hold of yourself. As a human race, we must survive. Just imagine there is a fire. We invented it. Now use it. We can make it not so chilly outside. The ice age begins. Now the planet will test us like never before. Just 50,000 years ago, glaciers begin to advance down from the North Pole. At the same time, humans continue their conquest of the globe, arriving in China and Australia. By 30,000 years ago, Homo sapiens reach Europe. The march of man reaches the frigid tundra of North Siberia. Despite of the trials of the Ice Age, man endures and develops the last tools we need to be truly Human. The clues lie in these symbols. We have taken an intellectual leap to think beyond here and now, to think beyond what is needed to survive. We can only say that we have an organism that is human, that is the same like us, only when we see the evidence of symbolic thought. We analyze, look closely at the analysis of the caves and see a picture of a cow. Everybody will recognize a picture of a cow. It's only when we start seeing all of those things on a drone wall caves, then we can say that is a human. A picture of a cow discovered on a cave's wall. People and creatures that think like us, that see the world in the same way like us. From that moment on, my friends, the human history has been marked to be radically different.
different than any other species on planet Earth. Now, with huge amounts of planet's water locked up in ice, sea level plummet. The humans come across the land bridge from Siberia to North America. In the history of the world, in one hour, and in less than 40 minutes, more than 13 billion years have passed. These years of preparation have finally allowed men to expand and spread out across the planet. BAM! Our history of the world began with the beginning of time. The Big Bang. BAM! Our history of the world has taken us on a journey of almost 14 billion years. That is a really, really long time. And that began with the beginning of time. The Big Bang. BAM! It is important to remember how small a slice of a history we actually occupy. To make things simple, imagine compressing 14 billion years of history down to only 14 years. At this scale, the Earth would have been existed for only 5 years. So that is about a third of the history of the universe. Large complex creatures would have developed seven months ago. At this scale, dinosaurs went extinct only about three weeks ago. The entire history recorded of humans would span only for the last three minutes. So if 14 billion years would equal 14 years in the recorded history of the universe, then the humans from the 14 years will occupy only 3 minutes. The last 3 minutes. And now, modern industrial societies, the industrial revolution, effectively, happened only six seconds ago. What that shows me is that we humans have been around for a very brief instant. Mankind have waited for billions of years for our brief instant to shine. Humans, rather than die off, we have adapted. It is now 10,000 BC, and we have colonized the entire globe from coast to coast to the mountain top. From tundra to desert, humans are there. Our uh, closest relatives, the chimpanzees, they live in the tropics. They only live in the tropics. Ch -ch -ch chimpanzees only in the tropics. But humans, not like chimps, we are colonizing the entire planet. With temperatures warming after the ice age, Plants and animals are more plentiful, and humans are settling. And finally choose to stop moving, and permanent settlements begin. Populations 
crow and with more mouths to feed, the people had to become smarter. They had to find a way to increase the amount of food they can get from the surroundings. Now, one discovery forever changes the planet and the path of humankind. We learn how to plant seeds and the unhelded hero of the human history is grass. Some of the m most familiar species of grass that we are used with is sugarcane. The monkey likes all the cereal crops, the wheat, the barley, they're all grass. This grass, the grains, that you eat in the morning with a little milky, it is the staple crop on what our civilization is. It is the majority of our calorie intake. I eat cereal. So we had the cow and we made milk and then we discovered the grass to make cereal. So I have milk and cereal. What else do I need? I need to tell you that by forces of geography there is no place on earth that had higher concentration for plants and animals that can be domesticated. That place is the Middle East. In the Middle East we have this remarkable convergence of species that can be domesticated. In terms of animals we talk about calves, pigs, sheep and goats. In terms of plants we have two variety of wheat, rye, barley, lentils all in this small part of the world Middle East no core but one animal that gives humans an unbeatable edge is the horse perhaps no other animal had a bigger influence on the course of human history Christopher Columbus will bring horses with him on his second voyage to America. History has taken us on a wild ride from the initial blasts of the Big Bang to the formation of Earth and its first creatures and the rise of men to the top of the animal chain. Our one hour story is coming to an end. Everything was all in one place on Mark Zuckerberg's page. We are the dominant players on the planet. We have learned to harness 50,000 times more energy than our ancestors. This energy drives our fast lives and this little world wide web. A network that has been in the working since the human beings have walked the earth. Our one hour story is really coming to an end. Gravity sculpted our universe. The past has bloomed into a world filled with energy and creativity. But remember, in everything that we do and everything that we are, we remain monuments of the past and continue to make history every day. You watched the history 
in one hour.